This morning I woke up with a goal. I had to do it. I couldn't sleep without it. It was the most important thing in the universe. Notion. Buy Red Bull. Done. If you want to add notes to Notion like this, then this video is the right for you. So to get this up and running, we'll have to use a shortcut. And this saves us a lot of money and time because otherwise we'd have to pay for a third party app or we'll have to pay for a bunch of integration services that cost quite a lot. But using your shortcuts app on your iPad or your iPhone, this is going to be absolutely free. To make the process easy, I have already created the shortcut. Before we get to that part, we have some work to do using Notion's API. This is what our shortcut is going to use for the purposes of creating a note. Here's how to do that. You go to the web API portal, click on my integrations, and then you click new integration. Once you have your integration, you just want to write some sort of a name, something that you will recognize later. So let's say Apple Watch integration. You don't need to upload an image. You want to pick your workspace, but you probably only have the one. So that's not necessary as well. If you want to be super safe, you can just allow it to insert content. This is the only function that we are using. And finally, we submit. Once we have the integration, the part we care about is the internal integration token. Using that internal integration token, we will be able to use this integration to add stuff to our Notion. Once you have your API key, you should create a temporary page in Notion to store it there. This would make it easy for you to pick it up back once you're on your iPad. So pretty convenient. You're also going to need a table ID. The table ID is the unique ID of the table in which we're going to add new notes using our shortcut. And yes, I'm going to explain how you can get that ID because it is not visible in Notion. First, we create a page. In that page, we'll call it new inbox because I already have an inbox. If you do not have an inbox page, I heavily suggest creating one. It would give you a great place to store notes that you haven't had the time to process just yet. Like the ones you create on your watch or your iPhone, or using Siri. So once we have created our inbox or whatever the table's name you're using, we need to initialize it as a table. It can be different types of tables, so boards and cards work as well, but you want this to be some sort of a database. If it's not a database, this is not going to work. To get the ID, the only thing you need to do is share that page. So we click on the share button, and then we need to copy the link. In the link, we can find the ID, and I'll show you just how. But before we do that, we have one extra step we need to take from that share menu. Copy the link, and then you need to share this with your shortcut. If we do not give our integration the rights to edit the page, it will not be able to edit it, so it won't be able to add notes. Anyway, once we have the link, we need to extract the database ID from it. But before we get to our database ID, let's take a look at how URLs work. And that's just handy knowledge. We'll take our Notions database URL and analyze it a bit and find out which part does what. The first part is our protocol. It's HTTP or HTTPS. The S stands for secure and basically it's better. The second part is the subdomain. It allows you to split your site into multiple sites or multiple purpose sites. It's a very handy feature, but not many websites are using it. So you're most likely going to see www a ton. And that just means, hey, you're in the main website. The next part is the root domain. This is the actual website you're visiting. Most people that want to exploit you online will give you a legit link, but the root domain will be different. And thus, if the root domain is different, you should be extra careful whether or not you should click that. Next, we have the resource path. This is the full path to what we're looking for. Websites have their own file systems in which they store their files. This is where our database ID is. The final part is the query parameters. This is extra data we provide the browser for it to do something extra. So when we look at the resource path, we can see the database ID here. I have separated it out to make it very easy to see, but what you're looking for is the forward slash and the question mark. Your database ID is everything between the last forward slash and the question mark. I've highlighted it here. You should find it in your own link and then you can be able to add it to the shortcut. Once we have done all of that, 
we are left with just the database ID. So once you have done all of this, pick up your iPad or your iPhone and open up the link with the shortcut in the description. Once you have done that, click on Setup Shortcut and it will ask you for the Notion table ID and the Notion API key that we just generated. First, it asks us for the database ID. So head to Notion and open up the note in which you saved that. So we have the database ID here. Just tap on it and then copy it. Once you have it copied, head back to shortcuts and paste and we click next. Now it will ask you for a Notion API secret. So we do the same thing. We double tap, select everything, click on it and copy. Once you have it copied, paste it in your shortcut. In my case, it asks me if I want to duplicate my shortcut because I already have it. Anyhow, we right now have our shortcut. We can click it from the iPad and write the text we wanted to say in our note. Cool shortcut. And the first time you run it, you need to allow it to connect to the Notion API. Be mindful of those allow messages. You want to be careful to what website you allow your shortcuts to connect, especially if you got them online from a random guy on YouTube. Although I'm fair, I promise. <laughs> And once we did that, the new node should have appeared in our database. So let's open up our inbox. And as you can see, we have the cool shortcut right here on the bottom. So that means our shortcut works. And because this by default works on your Apple Watch, the only thing left to do for you is to add it as a complication. And as you probably know, it's a pretty simple process and you probably have already done it a bunch of times. Oh yeah, and if you want to call the shortcut by a different name, you can just open it up and then click on the name here to rename it. In this case, it's named Notion Me because that's an awesome name, but you can also name it something nicer as Notion Me Please. And that's that. Now you can ask Siri to Notion you please and it's going to work just the same. That was it for today's video. If you liked it, press the like button, join my Discord and I would love to see you next time and stay awesome. Subscribe to Jordan and stay awesome.